We've had a good amount of Spider-Man and X-Men films over the years. Some of them have dazzled us, others have made me want to down bleach, but two of these films have stayed with me for well over a decade now. Films that have not only impressed on a technical level, but an emotional one. Strap in for a nostalgic overload, full of slow motion action, catch looking excitement, and enough leather outfits to even make the Matrix say, that'll do pig, that'll do. It's Spider-Man 2 vs. X2 X-Men United on Movie Feuds. I'm a simple man. I like to see bad guys get punched in the face, preferably by colorful characters with epic music accompanying them. I get my money's worth from both of these. X2 opens with one of the most iconic moments from the franchise. We're introduced to newcomer Nightcrawler as he whips around the White House in a flurry of acrobatic assaults. Secret Service agents are tossed wildly into the air, manically firing their guns in a state of panic, and Alan Cummings' character quickly becomes a fan favorite, before never showing up again in future films. Now, as awesome as that sequence is, Spider-Man 2 says, hold my train. The high-speed fight between our web-slinger and Doc Ock is cinematic gold. Not only is the fight masterfully choreographed, but the blending of CG and practical effects work is truly mind-blowing stuff. When Spider-Man is not trying to catch a train, we can witness him deliver pizzas. Pizza time. Save his aunt from falling off a clock tower. Chuck a little kid around a burning apartment. Dodge a flying car. Show Mr. Incredible how to stop a train without getting sued afterwards. Show up for the final boss battle. And even ride an elevator. Why would we end on that one? It rides up in the crotch a little bit too. It's exciting stuff. X2 sees the action and raises it a middle finger. There are mutants fighting all over the damn place. It's a pun. Subscribe. We have Wolverine vs. Lady Deathstrike. Storm vs. the Air Force. Cyclops versus nobody, because he gets his ass handed to him both times he attempts a fight. Yeah! Poor James Marston. I still like him though, haters. Logan going on a murder spree to protect the school children is probably something that should be turned into a full movie. <laughs> Director Sam Raimi gets bonus points for injecting some of his Evil Dead roots into the operating scene, but pound for pound, X-Men puts up a bit more fight giving it the round. As I wake up and saunter on over to the mirror and take a good hard look at the guy staring back at me, I've come to the realization that everything in this world ages, oftentimes poorly. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that Spider-Man 2 and X2 haven't put on a few rough miles, but at the same time, they still hold up incredibly well. Raimi definitely infuses more style into his film, with those trademark fast zoom-ins, crazy camera angles, and punchy colors, which to some will come off as campy. To me, it comes off as personality. Brian Singer plays things more traditionally with more locked camera shots and less crazy spectacle. What X-Men lacks in a spider cam flying all over New York City buildings, it makes up for in mutant abilities. We have tornadoes getting conjured up, Fireballs being thrown, a dude turning into metal, another dude manipulating metal, a third dude having metal bones. Metal is a big deal in this universe. There's telekinesis, Kyle, telepathy, laser eyes, hungry eyes, ice walls, ice tea, ice cube, vanilla ice. Sorry, I lost focus. X-Men has plenty of variety, I guess is the point I'm making, and the talented animators, puppeteers, stunt coordinators, and snack table attendants didn't miss a step bringing all this to life and, and feeding the cast and crew. There is truly something special though when watching Spider-Man swing high above the city streets and passing 57 American flags. Toby's gonna take this one. We have ourselves a cavalcade of stars here, gang. X-Men brings us a heaping helping dose of top shelf talent. There's huge Jackman, cloudy with a chance of African accent. Alan coming, then going. Gazer beam, not a bird, not yet a phoenix. Professor X gonna give it to ya, much better than Jennifer Lawrence. Magnet man, Sub-Zero. Rogue without any of the interesting powers. Animated series reference, Scream Queen. 
And I'm the bad guy in every movie I've ever been in ever. Spider-Man in no way, shape, or form can possibly compete with the sheer amount of quantity on display. So it's gonna have to stick with quality, I think. Let's see how it fares out. Of course, we have the man of the hour, Tobey Maguire, AKA Bully Maguire, AKA walking internet meme. His portrayal of Peter Parker and Spider-Man have had many a fan debates over the years. Is that a sentence? We'll, we'll, we'll keep going. I'm personally in the camp that loves him, truly, madly, deeply. It's a Savage Garden reference. Subscribe it's for Savage Garden. So it was a song. That was a band. Tobe's crew includes the on-again, off-again girlfriend, Mary Me Watson, his BFF, Green Goblin Jr., Ghost Uncle Ben, and the definitive Aunt May. I believe there's a hero in all of us. You know what, let's show the clip instead of what I just did. I believe there's a hero in all of us. Omni-Man kills it once again as J. Jonah Jameson, and Elizabeth Banks is always nice to see even if her role was nothing more than a consolation prize for not landing the gig as Mary J. Watson. That's a true fact. She tried out for that role, but was deemed too old at the time. Not for me, Elizabeth. Certainly not for me. Bruce, hail to the King Baby Campbell, along with a handful of other celebs, makes some great cameos throughout. Alfred Molina as Dr. Octavius was great casting, and I highly recommend you check him out in the movie Maverick if you haven't. We have a great cast all around, but X-Men has two legends with Sir Patrick Stewart and Sir Ian McKellen. I'm certainly gonna give this round to them. Holy shit, that was bad. Let's conclude. Based on the criteria I pulled out of my ass for this feud, X-Men takes the win, right? What if I would have had music as a category? Then I would have given it to Spider-Man. What if I would have focused on comic accuracy? There's definitely a debate to be had there. Wolverine's certainly not wearing that beautiful tight yellow spandex, is he? That said, I have always reserved a special place in my empty cavity where my heart once resided for X-Men 2. And that hasn't changed. Although as I have aged horribly, Spider-Man 2 has somehow only gotten better. My winner was and still remains X-Men 2, but that's not the final verdict because I pull my audience every single time I do one of these on my YouTube community tab and they beg to differ with the final results. Here they are. As of this recording, X2 received only 18% of the votes, making Spider-Man 2 the true winner with a staggering 82%. Do I think those results are fair? No, absolutely not. But I won't discredit Spider-Man 2 in the slightest. These are both fantastic films. Do you agree with me or with the final verdict? Please let me know in the comments below and make sure to like and subscribe if you had a good time. Thank you for watching. I'm Adam and this is more than just reviews. This is Movie Feuds. You're still here. Well, in that case, did you know I have a whole playlist chock full of these movie feuds? Wild stuff. I took a nine month break from this show so that I could do a similar one for Screen Rant called Real Rivalries. If you missed any of those or didn't even know they existed, I have a playlist for that too. If you have, however, watched them all, then I guess I have absolutely nothing to offer you at this point. Goodbye and good luck.